So we left off in the last video looking at some, some special effects for coloring. You know, we looked at hard edge and duotone, soft edge versions of, of flat local color. But some of the special effects would be adding other colors into our local colors. And then the next special effect is you can replace the black line with a colored line, even a gradated line. So that's called a color hold. It's called a color hold because of printing, because the printer has to hold the black in those areas for inks, because black is always printed last. So this is, to me, an overdone digital colored lemon. <laughs> it's got too much going on. But you also have to think about how it's going to be printed, especially if it's made for printing, not just screen, right? And so just like with our logo, you want to think about the different backgrounds it goes on. So if it goes on a darker background, even if it's crazy like and really over shaded like this, you're going to want to add an offset around it so that its line art shows up on a dark background, right? And then you might want it to be printed professionally, which is changing the millions of colors in the screen to CMYK. A dot separation. This is how things are professionally printed on offset lithograph presses, including silkscreen t-shirts that have gradations. They're separated into these little tiny ink dots, right, to give you this blended. And on this image, let me see, I have it where you can download it and it's at really high resolution so you can zoom in and see it, but it won't let me zoom into Canvas anymore in the browser, so let me download it and just show you. Because it might not look like there's a lot of difference between this, which is using the millions of colors of the computer, and this. But this is separating it out into distinct dots of ink. And to do that, you have to know what the, the halftone screen angles are. That's going to be on the final exam. We're going to go over it and how they mix. So there's a lot of information there about digital coloring. and that's why I give you some slides to look at to help inform you. And it will give you some things, some examples of different coloring styles that you might want to apply to your work, right? Including some favorites of mine and maybe some favorites of yours. So this video is all going to, or this, yeah, this 15 minutes is all going to be about digital coloring. Digital coloring is distinct from digital painting. Though they're often connected, they're distinct in that digital coloring is defined as coloring behind a real or implied outline. So when you think of digital coloring, think of illustration styles like animation, where you have line drawing that then is colored behind, or comic books where you have inking that is then colored behind. And you can find different handouts that will help under the links page of our Canvas course. Okay, so here, this is by, um, from Pasadena, where I went to art school. This is by Bryce Ho Draws. You can follow them on Instagram. They're very impressive at digital coloring. <laughs> and they're pretty good at drawing as well. So here you have just a hard edge duotone example, kind of inspired by anime. But let's look at the steps. They're the exact steps of our spot illustration, even though this is a full page illustration. So you start with the sketch. You clean the sketch up with clean lines. She does it with a brush pen physically, then brings it into the computer, cleans up that line art. I don't think she takes the step to make it a vector because she's just making poster sized prints. But then flat color and then duotone. So you can see the difference between the flat color here and then the duotone. And it's just a simple step of adding a shadow tone to each local color. Here is a, a past example where I did a Pokemon version. Pokemon is an animated and comics property, right? So I took our, our logo and took it through the steps. So I sketched it, did vector line art, and then colored it in with flats. So flats will always be the first step. But instead of hard edge duotone, this shows soft edge duotone. And so soft edge duotone is splitting it into highlights and shadows. And then I even added a little bit of a special effect color hold and a little glint on the claw and on the helmet. And that 
that's kind of the finished production model, right? There's even a little full spectrum coloring in the helmet. You see that there's some blues that are reflected in the gray. Whenever you add another color other than the local color, that's called full spectrum. So it's a whole process, but it always starts with flatting. So color printing is a pretty new thing. It's not even 100 years old. So color mass reproduction, right? And when it was started, it, it's always used cyan, cyan, yellow, um, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black ink on white paper. And these, this was the first full formulation. These were the, the extent of all the colors you can get by mixing that. You had pure yellow, you had pure magenta, you had pure cyan, and then you had black at different formulations. And so you, you take those inks and you mix them at different amounts and you can get these. And it gave you a very limited color palette. So all early colored comics were limited to that grid of palette. And that's how digital coloring is kind of modeled in limitations first and then extrapolating into different options. So flat color is always the first choice. You take your line art and then behind it, you fill it in with a base color. That base color is usually a local color like you see here. And this is a past student example. So that, that base color is the color that the thing would be no matter the lighting condition. So this is Caucasian skin, an orange unitard, orange hair, blue gloves, right? without any shading yet. Another way of doing flatting is to fill it with kind of random colors, like you see here. They're all kind of fluorescent colors. And if you are a production artist, as what's called a flatter or a flatting artist, which is one of the most common entry-level digital art jobs, because it's an important job, instead of choosing local colors for it, you might choose something that's kind of close, but you use the most distinct, vibrant colors you can, often taken from this chart, because this is like as far apart as these colors can get. So that later colorists, other colorists, or maybe you later can easily select individual shapes, right? So if you have magenta next to red, you can just use your magic wand and they're not gonna accidentally select each other. So instead you have like fluorescent green next to fluorescent pink. We'll see some of those flattening examples. I'm going to use Wonder Woman as kind of a, a repeating theme throughout this because she has a lot of primary colors on her and different ways of coloring and different artist renditions of her. So we have the sketch, we have the clean line art. Uh, when you fill in with solid black parts of your line art, that's called full bleed. And whenever you do that, that means that no color can exist there, right? So if you ever want to color on top of that solid black, you'll have to do a special effect, a color hold on top of your line art. But this is just basic local flat color for Wonder Woman. And because the line art's nice and clean and sensitive, this looks pretty good. But we're going to see how you can develop that more and more. Here are some finished versions of artists using Wonder Woman with flat color. So just one local flat color. And you'll notice how it changes depending on the line art. Here, this line art has a ton of full bleed in the shadows. And because that line art is heavily shaded, the flat color looks pretty great because all those kind of variations are kind of implied by that heavy shadow and highlight. Here, it's more open and it looks a little bit more vintage. Here, it's less saturated. But this is all just with flat color. Often you'll see flat color done with heavy inking. Here's just a nice little animation. Again, just all flat color. Notice how black line art surrounds everything. So if you think that flat color is the right option for you, you really have to take the time to find the exact right tones. Because in all of these examples, the artist is using a slightly different red for the reds, a slightly different yellow for the yellows. Uh, sometimes they're filling in the empty space in the hair, which would otherwise just be white, with blue 
or with gray, you know, depending on how they want that hair to, to look black or brown. So you have to choose the right colors. When you can't decide what the right colors are, that's when you resort to using flatting. And you use flatting so that the colors can be easily changed. So this is an example of flatting for your, your flat color. And this is an example of trying to use local color. So the problem with using local color here is then if later I want to change this little sack on this guy's back to a blue color, and I try to select this color, it's way too close to this color, right? So it's going to select all of it. So instead, flatting allows you to have easily selectable sections. Does that make sense? Even though it looks kind of crazy. Now here is who I think is the best in the business. This is Dave Stewart. He colors for comic books for all types of comic books. He works a lot with Dark Horse. And he works a lot, a lot with one of my favorite comic book artists, who's Mike Mignola, the creator of Hellboy. So we're talking about the coloring here, not the artwork, right? The colorist gets the artwork from the inker or from the comic book artist. And their job is to put in first the flats. So here are Dave Stewart's flats for this inking of Hellboy. And then this is his finished color. And you'll notice that the finished color is such a subtle duotone, such a subtle soft edge duotone. And the colors are all just so slightly different than each other. But it gives this beautiful finished effect. But he got to that by really separating out with more extreme colors to begin with. Okay. Duotone, we take that, that past student example again is when you take that local base color and you split it into lights and darks, right? Here you see it in animation. So you have the skin tone of the turtle is one local color, but split into lights and darks. You get this. You're also going to get a mentorship presentation on digital coloring next class. That's going to help cement this into your thinking, right? This is duotone as well, but this you can see is soft edged. So in animation, you often see what's called hard edge duotone, or sometimes called cell shading, right? Where it's, it's almost like it's cut out. Sometimes it's called cut edge between the colors. But here, this is soft edge. It's a little bit more gradated between the, the light and the dark values. Now, you can also have the two intermixed in the same image. So here are some, this is a beautiful example. Um, of very simple duotone hard edge. Notice everything is filled with a base color, and then that base color is split into two tones, a light and a dark. That's all there is. This is a wonderful way to work for production. So it, it makes printing very cheap. It makes it very accurate. It works really well for like t-shirt graphics, limited ink colors, all that kind of thing. Here, we take the local color for this guy that's flat, and here we split it into duotone, and immediately it starts bringing the thing to life. So even just a little bit of duotone can help a lot. What's tough about it is you have to choose where the shadows are going to be. So you're actually doing a new creative choice, drawing your shadows. So let's see our Wonder Woman with flat color. Once we add duotone, this is soft edge duotone, you can see all the modeling that can exist there. That's a lot of work, and this is a little overdone, but this is what you'll see in a lot of digitally colored comics now. But notice that she still has just full bleed for the black hair, and her lasso is just a solid ink line, since that was in the line art. So she's not finished yet. So here are some duotone Wonder Women. These are duotone hard edge. Now digital coloring is still digital coloring, even if you remove the line art which sometimes you do. And it looks like it's made out of like cut out shapes, which is kind of cool. This was very popular for flash animation. But it's still digital coloring. And I hope you can see why. And then most of the time you see uh, do hard edge do a tone for animation. And it just keeps it easy to reproduce by multiple artists. And you can use it in some really cool ways as well. 
Now, this is how 